called myself a huge chunk of something that Alex Jones called me. Okay, look at the way that the BLM riots were covered up by the Mockingbird Media and another event has been pushed and pushed and pushed on the public as the worst atrocity in the history of our nation. What um, gives me hope is people are waking up and they are seeing that, you know what, there's something else going on here with this whole COVID-1984 agenda. Well, apparently jail only allows for 30 minute phone calls. So this video is a pickup from last video in my exclusive interview with January 6th prisoner, Jacob Chansley, tied for the longest sentence, even though he had committed no violence January 6th. Uh, so we get back into the conversation in this video, uh, talking about what he's gonna do after prison, talking about some of the rumors, the direction the country's going and that organic diet that garnered so many headlines. So before we get into it, gotta shout out the sponsor of this video, Virtual Shield. It's being reported that the top five tech corporations are lobbying hard against consumer privacy. I do everything in my power to ensure my privacy online. That means I always keep my VPN on. I only use Virtual Shield VPN. Virtual Shield has been built from the ground up for your protection. I think it's the fastest, most reliable, easy to use and secure. It's also available for iPhone and Android. I've partnered with Virtual Shield to give my audience 50% off for life and a free 30 day trial of Virtual Shield during the holidays. Go to virtualshield.com slash ivory or click that link in my description to start protecting yourself online now. And also, now we'll go right back to the unedited raw interview exclusively with Jacob Chansley. He wanted to talk to an independent journalist, not the corporate media. This is a free call from Jacob Chansley. An incarcerated individual at Alexandria Detention Center. This call is not private. It will be recorded and may be monitored. If you believe this should be a private call, please hang up and follow facility instructions to register this number as a private number. To accept this free call, press 1. To refuse this free call, press Thank you for using Securus. You may start the conversation now. Okay, so we're still recording? Yes, we are. Hey. Okay, so to, to answer your question on the other side, what, what um, gives me hope or, you know, what do I, what, what, what one thing that gives me hope is the idea that currently what we are seeing, not just in the United States, but all over the world, is people are waking up and they are seeing that, you know what, there's something else going on here with this whole COVID-1984 agenda. And this virus is killing less than 1% of the population, and yet we are acting as though it is killing, you know, as many people as H1N1 or as some even greater, deadlier pandemic. And people are waking up and they are taking to the streets and peacefully, non-violently, they are standing up and saying, no more, we're not going to do it, we don't care about your vaccine passports, we don't care about your vaccine mandates, we are not going to allow you to push us around. And when you look at history, whether it be, you know, Mahatma Gandhi, Jesus Christ, Martin Luther King Jr., or the way that the USSR was brought down, non-violent, non-cooperation with tyranny, non-violent, non-cooperation with evil always creates long-lasting change. You know, Gandhi once said that um, victory attained through violence is tantamount to defeat, for the victory is only temporary. Well, all non-violent, non-cooperation victories have been sustained, that they, 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 they have been long-term victories. And it's because what ends up happening is the consciousness of the people evolve. The consciousness of the people grow and it changes, not just in one person, not just in our small nation of people, but all over the world. So right now, what gives me hope is that there are so many people, whether it be in Australia or in Europe or in the United States or in Africa or in, you know, uh, wherever they're all over the world you know in russian countries and there's people that are standing up and saying no we are not going to do this you do not have sovereignty over my body my body is my vessel it is my god-given right to say no to your medical treatment it is my god-given right to say no to your Passport. And, you know, kind of, you well, know, let, let me say but, there were, I mean, we've seen the video of what seems to be tens of thousands of people taking to the streets to protest these va vaccine mandates peacefully, yet the mandates go right through. 
and you say you bleed red, white, and blue, well, we, we, people would say we don't have the red, white, and blue without violence. It was violence that created the United States of America, many would argue. So it sounds like you're saying you're against violence at all costs. Is that what you're saying? Well, like I said, violence, any victory attained through violence is tantamount to defeat. And the fact of the matter is, we as a nation are not a nation of violent people. We as a nation are a nation of evolved people. We have taken the next step as far as our government is concerned and created and established a government with checks and balances, created and established a government that is for the people, by the people. But what has happened is that we have elected corrupt people, and these corrupt people have appointed corrupt unelected officials. And these unelected officials are able to stay in power for many, many, many years longer than the corrupt elected official who appointed them. And when you allow one corrupt politician, one corrupt elected official to take office after another, after another, after another, and each one is appointing new corrupt people to appointed levels of power, then you have an exponentially corrupt government growing. And that's why we've seen centralized power. But here's the thing, and this is, I think, really important for people to understand. The law doesn't mean anything if it's not written in the hearts and the minds of the people. Otherwise, it's just ink on paper, okay? So if the vaccine mandate law or whatever it is, if it, that passport law is not written in the heart of the people of the United States or of Europe or what have you, then what we have is a split where the, the people are obeying the laws of God and the government is trying to enforce the laws of man or you know, some might say of, of Satan, <laughs> all depending on you know uh, your perspective on the matter. But no, I don't think that violence is, is the answer. I think that if anything, well, all we have to do is look at the way that the BLM riots were covered up by the Mockingbird media and look at the way that other events until I'll say, or another event has been pushed and pushed and pushed on the public as the worst atrocity in the history of our nation and blah, 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 blah. When the fact of the matter is, when you, when you mirror the two, when you mirror the, you know, the BLM riots versus another event, you know, that happened, then you realize, oh my God, like one, one event is, it has, there's no firearms, there's no murder, there's no burning of anything. Another event, there's firearms, there's murder, there's chaos, there's the, you know, arson, you know, there's people trying to take over government buildings, like what was happening in Portland and Seattle and Colorado. And, you know, so what we have to realize is that we have to come up with some sort of a formula that is uh, nonviolent, that is non-cooperation oriented, okay? And we have to use that formula over and over and over again so that our movement, our peaceful, nonviolent movement cannot be infiltrated by people that try to make the, the movement look bad. So that's why I was thinking along the lines of, you know, like when we were in Arizona, we met at the Capitol every single day, okay? And we did so nonviolently. We had no issues whatsoever okay and if anyone or ever even tried to get in any way shape or form violent or tried to cause civil unrest we would distance ourselves from them and tell them to stop or have the police take care of the issue themselves okay and in this way these people singled themselves out and the peaceful non-violent protesters were quite clearly a good distance away from all of that okay so if people met at their capitals, say, every Saturday, and they did so nonviolently, and they protested, you know, in capital cities all over the world, okay, at capital buildings all over the world, and, or, or all over the country, and they did this every Saturday at noon, and this way you wouldn't have any sort of... Uh, you know, miscommunication about the time or the place, whether or not are we doing it this Saturday? Yes, we're doing it every Saturday. And what time? At noon. And are we violent? No, we are nonviolent. We are 
doing nonviolent, non cooperation, the way that Gandhi did, the way that Martin Luther King Jr. did, the way that Jesus Christ did, the way that brought down the USSR, because I don't know if you know, it was it was the people of Soviet Union giving the finger to the communist dictators in the USSR that ended up bringing down the USSR. It was everybody's kind of just coming together and saying, Nope, we're not going to work, we're not doing anything that you tell us. Sorry. We're we're done with your communist crap. That is what brought down the USSR, and that is what will bring down this New World Order COVID-1984 agenda. It's what will bring down the Chinese Communist Party in China. It's what will bring down any and every oppressive government, whether it be in Australia, because from what I hear, they have quarantine camps in Australia now. And trust me when I say quarantine camps are one step away from concentration camps. So yep. just, just because the law says one thing, it's just ink on paper unless it is written in the hearts and the minds of the American people or the people of the world. And I'll tell you right now, the one true law that is written in the hearts and the minds of the American people and the people of the world is freedom and liberty and the right to body autonomy. Fascinating. Um, I want to ask you what you plan to do with your life when you get out of prison. Well, um, you know, I'm going to continue down the spiritual shamanic path that I'm on. Um, you know, I think that uh, I, I, I'm going to write some books. I've already written a couple of books. Um, uh, one of them, obviously, is One Mind at a Time, A Deep State of Illusion. I really think that book will help people to understand what's going on now and what we can do about what's going on now in the future. Um, also, I'll continue to do videos and, um, you know, teach, you know, the spiritual teachings that I've been teaching for quite some time. I'd also like to continue to work with kids, uh, like I have, you know, for many years. Um, I'd also like to continue painting and doing clay sculptures and stuff like that. Um, I'd also like to try my hand at making some music. Um, I'd like to go around the country and speak to people, you know, whether it be in small crowds or in large crowds, to speak to people and help them to understand the spiritual secrets of the universe, as well as how those spiritual secrets of the universe and the spiritual secrets of God pertain to us living our lives here in the physical world and how that pertains to things like uh, socioeconomics and geopolitics. And I really believe that uh, if people <laughs> just watch my videos, whether it be on Rumble or on BitChute, or if they read my books, um, there's another book I wrote called um, Will and Power Inside the Living Library. And I use the pen name Lone Wolf, L-O-A-N, like you're loaning something to somebody, Lone Wolf. You can get that one on Amazon as well. Um, that one has a lot of spiritual teachings. That's a science fiction slash fantasy book. Um, it's 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 my first work of art as far as literary uh, work is concerned. Um, but it's good. It's got a lot of good stuff in there. Um, so I want to continue with that series because that's going to be a series, Will and Power series. I also want to write, um, I have a lot of poetry that I've already written. I've got big plans. And uh, more than anything, I think it's important that people realize that whatever has been spoken about me in the media is just a complete fabrication. In the media, they're trying to say that I'm an actor. They're trying to say that I chose the name QAnon, that I'm a self-entitled QAnon shaman. First of all, I never, ever called myself a QAnon shaman. That was something that Alex Jones called me, okay? And uh, I'm not an actor. I'm not, <laughs> just because I have an acting profile doesn't mean that I'm an actor. I've never acted a day in my life, <laughs> you know? So it, that's just a small fraction of the... the misinformation that is being printed about me in the Mockingbird media. But I mean, you of all people know, the Mockingbird media isn't about the truth. They're about being first, not being right. They're about their own personal agenda. And their agenda is divide and conquer. It is about fracturing the American mind, the American uh, populace into as many compartmentalized and propagandized groups that they can, and all for control. Right, but why do you have an acting profile? Well, because um, when I was working with kids, um, I was chased out of the home by a kid that wielded a knife. And after that, I was like, you know, maybe I, maybe I should take a break from working with kids and do something that sounds fun. I've always wanted to be an actor. That sounds like a fun job. Maybe I'll make an acting profile. So I made an acting profile. And guess what? I didn't get any acting work. <laughs> oh. 
you know, just because you have an acting profile doesn't mean you're an actor. I was trying to do something that sounded fun as opposed to something that was really intense and, you know, garnered a lot of hatred for doing my job, you know. When you when you are when you do something like working with kids and you're you're supposed to enforce the rules, now I'm sure that parents all around the country understand that when you enforce the rules with your kids, they don't like you. Right. So imagine, imagine when you're working with, you know, ten teenage boys that it just some of them just got out of correctional facilities, and you have to enforce the rules, and you're the only person in the house that's enforcing those rules. Do you think they're going to like you? Do you think they're going to make your job easy? Mm-mm. No. Yeah. Yeah. And now, see, and this is the reason why not a lot of people want to take that kind of work because not a lot of people have the kind of heart that I do, and I'm not trying to like tell you know my. You know, my own horn here, but it's just true. That kind of work takes a very special kind of person, and mm-hmm. you either get into it for a week or two or a month or two and realize it's not for you, or you stick with it for a couple of years, and you try to do your best to have a positive impact on the world, and I chose the latter. I worked with kids for six and a half years yeah. in group homes, teen boys in group homes, and only after I got chased out of the house with a knife was I like, you know what, I think I'm going to take a break from this, and maybe I'll try some acting. You know, that sounds kind of fun. But I never got any acting work. Well, while we are on the topic of these uh, assumptions about you, there's conspiracy theories about your te- uh, chest tattoo. So what is that? Okay, so the chest tattoo, the one that's the triangles, that is called the Valk knot or Odin's knot. It is a Viking symbol that is put on the tombs of Viking warriors that died fearlessly in battle with honor and got to go to Valhalla, which is essentially the um, Viking version of heaven. And because I have Viking blood in me, I put that on my body because whether or not people believe in it or not, I believe I had many past lives and I believe in one of them. Yeah, yeah, many of them. I died fearlessly in battle. So I put it on my body because my body is my temple. Okay, so the idea that it has anything to do with a spiral triangle, anybody that looks at the spiral triangle and looks at the Valk knot sees that they are completely different symbols. And anybody that tries to assert the notion that the Valk knot is any way associated with the spiral triangle is an idiot. Because then they obviously don't understand history, they don't understand symbolism, and they don't understand tribalism. Wow. And uh, I got to ask you about your organic diet. It garnered so many headlines. Uh, why do you need to eat organic? Okay, so 80% of the serotonin in everybody's body is produced in their gut. When you consume pesticides, in particular pesticides like glyphosate, produced by Monsanto, okay, you end up destroying all of your gut flora. You end up destroying a lot of the serotonin that is produced in your gut, okay, and this ends up affecting, the serotonin is responsible for your mood, it's responsible for your, your appetite, it's responsible for your sleep, it's responsible for your sleep cycles, your sexual appetite, it's responsible for pretty much every aspect of being human, okay, and when you do your research, you will find that glyphosate, pesticides, is linked to pretty much every type of cancer, neurological disorder, depression, anxiety, all sorts of other diseases, you know, Crohn's disease, um, uh, what's it called, um, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, all sorts of stuff is real, is all linked to glyphosate or pesticides, okay? And it also ends up affecting the brain quite dramatically, all right? So when you consume pesticides on a daily basis, not only do you highly increase your chances of getting cancer, but you also highly increase your chances of experiencing depression or mood swings, experiencing anxiety, getting a neurological disorder, okay? Getting IBS or Crohn's disease, and it's because these pesticides are designed to kill whatever consumes them okay so like you know most people don't quite realize that genetically modified organisms and pesticide actually alter your dna because your body has to adapt to consuming poison every day your body has to adapt to consuming genetically modified organisms that were created in a lab by human beings and not created by god so you know when you consume organic food not only do you taste the difference, not only does the food taste better, but you feel different. You get a euphoria after you eat as opposed to just feeling full after you eat. Okay, your bowel movements are different, all right? Uh, your, your chances of getting things like cancer and your chances of you know, neurological disorders, et cetera, et cetera, IBS, Crohn's disease, all these things go down dramatically because you're not consuming poison on a daily basis. You're not consuming genetically modified organisms that alter your DNA on a daily basis. It's because 
because of pesticides, it's because of GMOs that so many people out there have allergies, like gluten allergies or allergies to foods that most people never had allergies to before. And it's because these foods are genetically modified organisms. Just because it looks like an apple and kind of tastes like an apple doesn't mean it's actually an apple. It is a genetically modified organism. How these companies work is they create all these, like they create thousands if not millions of different specimens where they've manipulated the DNA of the food or whatever it is, the corn, apples, what have you. And they take the specimen that looks the most like an apple or looks the most like corn, and then they, they push those onto the public. Okay, they, out of all these thousands or millions of specimens, they take the one that looks the most like the food that we normally eat, and they call it corn, they call it an apple, they call it a plum or whatever, but it's not. Okay, these are genetically modified organisms created by human beings, not created by God. And they are created by human beings to be resistant to pesticides, in particular glyphosate and others. Because if you spray pesticides, if you spray Roundup on a plant, guess what happens? It dies. But if you spray pesticides on a genetic modified organism that is designed to withstand Roundup, then guess what? It stays alive. And anything that eats it dies. All right, and if you want to really want to get into it, I mean, the way the pesticides like glyphosate and genetically modified organisms are linked to the extinction of bees, uh, honeybees all over the planet, then you're getting into another level of the problem. When you get into the way that glyphosate is actually linked to the destruction of whole ecosystems by killing the microbiological life in the soil, which in order to, for plants to flourish, in order for ecosystems to grow, microbiological life in the soil has to be healthy, okay? Then you're getting into another level of why glyphosate and pesticides are so deadly and bad. Okay, so not only am I not eating these things because they're bad for me, I'm eating these things because they're bad for the environment, they're bad for humanity long term, they're bad for the seventh generation. Okay, and when you really look at it, when you look at it like objectively, you will see that you vote with your money every single day. And if you're voting with your money to keep Monsanto a bioengineering company that has been linked to you know ecocide and, and death all over the globe, a bioengineering company that created Agent Orange in Vietnam and told everybody that it was safe, and we all know now that it's not. They, they created bovine growth hormone where they inject cattle with hormones, and you know look at what that's done to people all over the planet. They're, they created um, um, glyphosate, they created nuclear bombs. Monsanto is an evil bioengineering company, so when you buy Monsanto produce, when you buy Monsanto food, then guess what? You are voting for Monsanto. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I remember your mom said you get very sick if you don't eat organic. That's what she told the media. And then your lawyer um, pushed for a religious exemption for you to eat organic. So hopefully that continues for you in prison. And I know your family's trying to... court order, so it better. Yeah, and I know your family's trying to get you um, at least moved to Arizona. Is that going to happen? That's the hope. We will see. You know, yeah. um, the BOP is the one that decides on all that. And we will know within the next uh, within the next month or so where it is they're going to put me in. You know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, uh, all the best to you. Is there anything else that you want to say before we wrap up? Well, yeah. I. I mean, unless you want me to give this information that I have that I was going to give specifically to you, to somebody else, I have about, I'd say, an hour's worth of information I was going to give you. Oh, wow. Like you to, if, if you're open to it. Absolutely. Okay, well, here's what we're going to do then. Um, because... Uh, because these calls are half an hour time, half an hour at a time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang up and I'm going to call you back and then we'll roll through it uh, until it's all done. Does that sound good for you? Sounds good. All right. I'll, uh, okay, I'll, I'll hear from you right shortly. Back. Okay. Bye. Yes,